Hi, my name's Sherry, and I'm an animal care specialist here at Brookfield Zoo, Chicago Zoological Society, and I'm talking to you in our Tropic World South America area. And as many of you know, yes, we have monkeys and birds, but we also have sloths. So if we come around this way, here's one of them now. <laughs> Hi, Angel. This is Raisin. We have two sloths here in South America. We have Raisin, who is going to be six in April, and then she's ready for her food. We're not to that point yet. <laughs> and then we also have Lawrence, and he'll be six in June, and he's up above the walkway right now. Um, there are six different species of sloths, and this one is we have Hoffman's two-toed sloths here. The two-toed sloth refers to the two toes that they have on their front feet, which as Raisin peers around, you'll be able to see them. Um, the two-toed sloth is found in South and Central American countries, including Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Guyana, Nicaragua, Panama, Peru, and Venezuela. Um, they are most prevalent in the Amazon rainforest basin of central Brazil and Peru. East, this is east of the Andes to the south and central Amazon basin. Sloths are xenarthrids, which means strange joints. Let me get her a... a uh, you want something, Angel? <laughs> Here. We'll get her some green beans because that's what she likes. So you can see, as she's demonstrating, the three toes on her back feet and the two on her front. Yeah, muffin. And there's her two on her front. Good girl. Okay. This will occupy her so I can continue on. <laughs> um, sloths are xenarthrids, which means strange joints. Uh, the same uh, giant anteaters are also in the xenarthrid grouping as well. Sloths are mammals and herbivores, which are herbivores eat plant-like materials. They don't eat meat. Um, all those sloths, this one, she does like eggs, eagle muff, <laughs> and green beans. Um, they can get between 24 to 28 inches long and weigh approximately 17 pounds. I'll tell you right now, Raisin, she's about 9.5 kilograms, which is close to 20 pounds, <laughs> you know, give or take a little. Um, they live on average about 25 years of age. The oldest one, one of the oldest ones was 43 years old. Um, the the two-toed sloth, let's see, you want another one? So their biggest predator are jaguars in the wild, as well as ocelots and harpe eagles. They spend most of their day upside down like this and sleeping. They prefer the upper canopy of the rainforest where many liana vines and direct sunlight are. So we try to emulate that here. Like this, this is like a, what a liana looks like in the wild where it'll, it's a real thick vine that wraps around a tree and that helps them to get to the, the rainforest floor. There you go. Um, one fun fact about them is that they defecate <laughs> every four to seven days. They only go to the rainforest floor to defecate or to, to go swimming, um, but they're safest in the trees. And so here at the zoo, we do, we monitor their input <laughs> and their output because they have, like right now I'm waiting to collect a sample for our routine annual sample collections from them from their feces. Um, 
But since sloths don't move a lot in the wild, they get nutrients off the algae that'll grow on their hair. And they'll also lick the, um, as it rains, because it is the rainforest, it'll get real damp and wet and they'll lick the, the water off their hair as well. <laughs> You're just an angel. Um, another fun fact is that they are great swimmers and the sloths will swim across a river to breed with the sloth on the other side. And breeding only occurs in the rainy season. So since everything about sloths is slow, their gestation is slow as well, which is approximately 11 and a half months. Um, Raisin and Lawrence are a breeding pair here at Tropic World. And like I said, they're found on our walkway in the South America area where Lawrence does spend most of his time hanging from a hammock above the walkway while Raisin prefers to be here on the peninsula. Um, but since everything about sloths is slow, they're just starting to enter their breeding ages now. Um, and males enter their breeding age a little later than females do. Um, let me go get you some more. She, she also, so I was gonna say what their diet consists of, which is fruits and veggies, such as mangoes, grapes, zucchini, green beans, um, head lettuce, escarole, um, See if you like some of this. Good girl. That's actually, it's a canned chow. We call it Zupreme Diet. And it's, um, it's got a lot of grain in there. So it's for her protein. Um, I'm not sure, I'll get her another little piece, if Lynette can zoom into her teeth. Oh. We'll see it with this. We'll see it with her egg. Um, Slot's dentition is five, four, five. You want some eggy? Here. Let's see. And if you can, do you want some today or not? No? <laughs> oh, yeah. See? So it is hard to see, but. The only teeth that are really visible from our angle are what you would assume are canines, but they don't fall under the classification of canines, but they have these four front teeth that are really sharp to help them grab, grab onto their food items. Um, they do have peculiar teeth that where the molars would be, those grow throughout their life and they wind up wearing them down as they chew on leaves, shoots, and bark, and roots, and, um, and all, all sorts of stuff. So it just kind of keeps, they keep wearing them down and they keep coming back. But it's, it's really hard to see, but that's where the majority of the teeth are, are in the way, way back. But then she has, like I said, those, those four visible ones. Um, so I, I hope you've learned a little bit more about sloths today. They are wonderful animals. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you when Tropic World reopens. Um, there are just a few more things I did want to, I wanted to state that we do with our sloths. Um, yeah. So with Ray's in here, you want some of that egg? We're doing, the keepers are doing ultrasound training. And like I said before, how <laughs> her, uh, her gestation will be, I need to take these glasses off, <laughs> how her gestation will be close to 11 and a half months. So as we go through, they haven't bred yet, but we're just getting her to just get desensitized to this is where we would wind up ultrasounding her. And we work closely with our vets and we have equipment that we can use so that she winds up getting used to it, used to an ultrasound wand. You have to use a medium between the wand and the hair so that you get a better image. So we. Um, 
use Vaseline to, as part of the training, but just getting our desensitized to touch. And that is great because our vets do have a portable ultrasound machine. So when we know that she's, um, that her and Lawrence have bred, then, then we'll be able to actually do some imagery with her. Um, we also just take advantage of since they do spend most of their time sleeping. We don't have a lot of hands on our, our animals like that. So with her, I can feel they're very solid, very solid, muscular. And as you can see, the really long hair. And this is where um, in the wild, algae would grow. But instead of that here in tropic world, um, we keep it humid. It's definitely humid in here but not enough for the algae to keep growing on her. Um, I'm gonna give her some more. The other thing that we do to just keep monitoring that she's defecating and eating on a regular basis is we have a scale and every now and then she'll sleep in, this is what we call a sleep sack. And then we have it hooked up to the scale here. And so when she's in it, it, you know, it does go up to the nine kilo mark with, with her in it. Um, <laughs> she's looking for more. <laughs> One, what else would you like, my angel? So this is how we... We give her some green beans on a stick and all sorts of stuff. This is head lettuce. Let's see, here. Do you want that? And here's the green beans. Oh. And it, it makes her have to kind of work for it a little bit. You want a little more of the ZPD? So, uh, <laughs> So you don't usually hand feed her, right? Well, we do the hand feeding of the ZPD, egg and grapes, just so that we know she's got some nutrients and it also keeps us bonded with her. She does come up for us. Um, but then the rest of the day we have her veggies and her leafy hanging. But this is just a way for basically us to bond with her too. And there are lots of monkeys in this habitat. Oh yeah. Do any of them ever come over and visit her? <laughs> well, right now, that's funny you ask. Right now we have uh, our golden lion tamarins are off exhibit. Uh, while Tropic World is closed, we have an area where we can monitor our animals a little closer. But once we reopen, we'll have some animal back out here with her. And she did actually have quite a nice <laughs> experience with the the gold lion tamarins is she would eat, sometimes they would come and, and just sit on her, groom the egg that gets around her face. They would just, you would catch Penny sitting on her, just grooming her. And uh, she didn't seem to mind it. Now Larry, on the other hand, I don't know. He, he, uh, <laughs> might, he might mind it. That's sweetie. Um. You can see how long, like, she really is, though. They, they're even though they curl up real small they really can what would you, you want that there maybe they're a little more dexterous than than people are aware um but like i said they can get up to 28 inches long and she spends her whole life pretty much upside down so her leg muscles everything is so powerful and so strong and they're fast when they want to move but it's typically very slow digestion very slow everything so if they don't if we come out here and we see that they haven't eaten their their diet one day we're not overly concerned because like i said they will um, defecate only once every four to seven days so sometimes when they're full enough and getting ready to defecate, they'll take a day off eating. 
Do they have to work hard to stay upside down? I think it's just so natural for them. This is like, this is a very typical sloth-like position because even in the wild, you'd see them like this where they would wind up just hanging here, eating leaves and some fruits, but you can see she dropped her grape to have the leafy. She'd prefer head lettuce over, over fruit. So I, I think it's just all natural for them. How much do they sleep? <laughs> I actually read that some sloths in the wild will sleep 20 hours a day. And I can actually believe that. I mean, we work our schedule around her. She is diurnal, so that means that they can be up during the day or at night. Um, but with, with Lawrence, her mate, uh, he definitely is up more at dusk. And then we have put night vision cameras on them and we'll see that they'll be up for about an hour and then go back to resting, so. Ooh, she really has some gorgeous hair. Oh. Do you guys have to wash her or brush her hair? No, no, she, she does though, doesn't she? No, and um, that's the thing is she does her self-grooming. There, like on cue, Lynette. <laughs> where she'll, like, she'll just start self-grooming and she comes in with this perfect hair every day. <laughs> I think she's looking for green beans. I even have, you'll find them, sweetheart. I'll leave, um, well. This is, I'll leave like a hanging tray and we have a couple bottles of water. And the other thing I've put out here is a big swimming pool for them, <laughs> just for fun. But I took it because it takes up this whole area and uh, you and I would be tripping over it. <laughs> so I was like, well, we'll leave that out today. But it's like a kiddie pool. Here, where, do you, where should I hang it? Here? I think you just want them green beans. So are green beans her favorite food? I think, yeah, with, with raisin, definitely, yeah. Um, Lawrence used to really like avocado, and then, you know, you give an animal too much of one good thing, they get burnt out. So then now he's preferring hard-boiled eggs, mm -hmm. just like she is. So her nose kind of looks a little shiny. Is it wet? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's got... It kind of is like, um, I, don't, I don't really want to say it's like a dog's nose, but it kind of is, where it will, it definitely has um, glands on it. And so sometimes you will see like little beads of sweat all, all in here. And you can see like with her eyes, you can tell that she's nocturnal, mm -hmm. how her pupils look like just little tiny pinpoints right now. And she basically is going off like her, her smell right now instead of her sight with me. Because like, yeah, her eyes aren't taking in a ton of light. So um, is, is uh, smelling their best sense? I think it, I think, yeah, it definitely. And I think it is, um, you can definitely smell, they don't, do scent marking, but they definitely do. Their urine is extraordinarily potent. And I believe that's also to let, let alone like let a male, let a female know that they're in the area, but it also can get, keep jaguars away. It, it's really that pungent where it's very, very cat-like in a way. Thank you again for visiting us here and taking the time to watch this Bringing the Zoo to You. And we can't wait to reopen for you guys. So everybody take care and stay safe and healthy.